doctor, you talked about dosage a little bit, and can we have too much of a good thing, so to speak, and how much should one person take? Does it depend on the person, the size of the person? Yeah, uh, with astaxanthin, there is some controversy about it, and I am very firm in using science to tell you how much astaxanthin to take. First of all, it is a fat-soluble antioxidant, and therefore, it does somewhat bioaccumulate, all right? Uh, it's T1 half, and T1 half means the time it takes for half of it to disappear out of your blood is 16 hours, which means if you're taking it every 24 hours, there is some buildup. Mm -hmm. And a good example of that is that if you raise a salmon without any astaxanthin or without any algae that it eats that has astaxanthin in it, the, the meat is white. But when you open up a Pacific salmon or Atlantic salmon, it's pink on the inside. Well, that's astaxanthin. It's bioaccumulated. And it's bioaccumulated in the membranes. And why do salmon have all this strength? How can salmon swim upstream uh, and jump over rocks and stuff mm -hmm. like that for days at a time? Uh, they must have some pretty strong antioxidants built into their system. And so uh, I, I think that's very important. But let's talk specifically about dose. Uh, for astaxanthin, my company recommends two to four milligrams a day. Even a one milligram a day dose is far better than no astaxanthin. And even that one milligram after 16 hours, there's still a half a milligram left. You take another one milligram, there's more astaxanthin. It would accumulate slower. But I think the ideal dose is between two and four milligrams. I strongly caution, do not buy what people are saying about, hey, if a little bit is good, more is a lot better. Uh, astaxanthin is not dangerous. It has an LD50 in rats that's 450 milligrams per kilo. That is just a huge number. I mean, that's like, uh, you know, water. <laughs> so it's very safe. But carotenoids do accumulate in your body. They accumulate in your skin, which will give you some sun protection. And uh, there is a company that has a patent on the use of astaxanthin for UV protection, a company called Cyanotech. And, uh, and they recognized early on. But if you eat too much of a carotenoid, uh, eventually you'll turn orange. You'll turn pink. And I've seen that. I've seen people taking 84 milligrams of lutein per day, and they were yellow. Uh, beta carotene mm -hmm. is another one where people were taking a couple of hundred milligrams of beta carotene. And I think that that is wasteful. It makes economically no sense. And science clearly says that two to four milligrams a day is a safe and effective uh, quantity to take. And I believe that that's an optimal amount. Now, if we, we can get it in our food sources too. You mentioned salmon. Yes. We talk about a couple more of those, and if we are able to do that through our food, do we still need to supplement, and, and how does that work? Yeah, the beautiful thing about, well, we're a producer of astaxanthin, so the beautiful thing for us is that you really can't get it in the food you eat except for eating wild salmon. Okay. Okay. Farm-raised salmon will have astaxanthin in it, but it's made in a chemical factory somewhere in Europe. And it is not the same. Only one quarter of the, the synthetic astaxanthin is the active form. Okay. All right? And the other thing is, is that there's no vegetables that have astaxanthin in them. There are no marigolds. There is no you know, fruits or vegetables. Now, with the other car carotenoids, uh, lutein is readily available uh, from plant sources. Spinach, green vegetables, broccoli has a lot of lutein in it. And zeaxanthin is also available in things like corn and, and things like that. So those are available. I still believe in lutein and zeaxanthin supplementation. But astaxanthin, you will only get from salmon, wild salmon. And uh, on average, if you eat like a six-ounce piece of salmon, you'll get three to four milligrams of astaxanthin. Okay. 